Hey guys, I don't know what's going on, but ever since the homunculus video came out, there have been some really strange news articles. It's so weird that all of this information is coming out right now, and I don't know, it just seems like some weird timing. First, let's start with the first big news headline from just a couple days ago. Scientists create synthetic human embryo models that raises ethical issues. I mean, I can't make this stuff up. From the BBC, quote, scientists have created the synthetic human embryos using no eggs or sperm, provoking deep ethical questions according to reports, end quote. Well, you don't say, I mean, maybe if you called it for what it is, a homunculus, quote, the synthetic embryos only days or weeks old could help researchers study the earliest stages of human development and explain pregnancy loss, end quote. Right, of course. This is for helping with pregnancy loss. Okay, so this is a good thing according to these news outlets. Quote, But the rapid progress has outpaced discussions on how they should be dealt with ethically and legally. Professor James Briscoe from the Francis Crick Institute said the field needed to proceed cautiously, carefully, and transparently to avoid a chilling effect on the public. End quote they even know that this is going to make people freak out. Well, because then we're going to have a bunch of homunculus walking around if we don't already. So they know that these things need to be slowly released in terms of the level of technological advancements that are going on behind the scenes. Quote, the development of human synthetic embryos was announced at the annual meeting of the International Society for Stem Cell Research. Synthetic embryos are also known as embryo models, as they resemble embryos for the purposes of research rather than being identical to them." End quote. Notice how they're trying to highlight on these models, but what's the end goal here? Quote, Stem cells have the capacity to become any cell type in the body, and if coaxed in just the right way, can be persuaded to form embryos. This is the first time that has been achieved using human material, although they are not truly synthetic as the starting material was cells cultured from a traditional embryo in the laboratory." End quote. Ah, I see. So they need a philosopher's stone. Quote, Professor Briscoe said, On the one hand, models of human embryos made of stem cells might offer an ethical and more readily available alternative to the use of IVF-derived human embryos. End quote. Oh, so this is a possible alternative. Is this really a new technology or a rediscovery? Researchers in the US and the UK say they've made a leap forward. They've created synthetic human embryo-like structures from stem cells that are more advanced than any similar structures made so far. Now, what they created doesn't have a beating heart or even a brain, but they raise troubling legal and ethical questions. Scientists say these embryo models could someday improve our understanding of genetic diseases or what causes miscarriages. The embryo-like structures are confined to test tubes. Implanting them in a womb would be illegal. For more on this, I'm joined by David Magnus, the director of the Stanford Center for Biomedical Ethics. Thank you so much for being here with us. So, Researchers are, are generally not allowed to grow human embryos for more than 14 days. So from an ethical point of view, what's the difference between growing a human embryo and growing a, a human embryo model? Yeah, so that's actually a tough question to answer. And in a way, we don't really know the answer yet. Uh, scientists are trying to find ways of better understanding the process of development and the current 14-day limits that are mostly self-imposed by the research community, although there are some regulations that impose those limits as well in some jurisdictions, um, make it hard to really fully study development. And so there are these efforts to try and create these embryo-like structures. This is the first one that's gone much past the blastocyst stage. Uh, in the last year or two, there was some induced um, um, blastomeres, um, things that were able to get actually out to not quite as far as this, but that were not created from uh, uh, embryonic stem cells. And all of these are trying to create things that they think will avoid those problems. The challenge is we don't really know what to call these things or how to think about these things from either an ethical or a regulatory point of view. Insofar as they can't turn into humans, they probably are morally not uh, fully uh, um, uh, morally, they don't, don't have the full moral status that embryos do if they don't have the ability to develop ever into, into humans. Um, and then the question also becomes from a regulatory point of view, how do the regulations see them? But the downside is the more they can't develop, 
the less they are like embryos, the less valuable they are from a research mm -hmm. point of view. But if you take this process to its natural conclusion, I mean, the fear is that we might end up with, with engineered babies. And though even though most scientists might adhere to those, uh, either the laws in, in the US or to international ethical standards, um, the demand is such that bad actors would eventually be able to, to take advantage of the technology. Well, I think there is certainly a worry about what happens if it turns out these embryo-like things can turn into viable embryos. And it actually raises a host of troubling ethical issues because some folks believe that the key to understanding moral status has to do with the potential to develop into a human being. And if this turns out to be something that can be done successfully with induced pluripotent stem cells, not just with embryonic stem cells, then it would mean that every cell has the potential to turn into a viable human being. Um, and what that does to arguments around potential is anyone's guess, but it will mean a lot of rethinking about a lot of the current ethical debate and where lines are currently drawn. This is all over the news right now, and I just think it's so weird that this stuff is coming out now, and it's not just this. There was another article from the BBC. Crocodiles found to have made herself pregnant. Virgin births in crocodiles may be common, say researchers. Quote, the phenomenon of so-called virgin birth has been found in species of birds, fish, and other reptiles, but never before in crocodiles. Quote, he speculated that the reason that parthenogenesis has not been seen in crocodiles is because people have not been looking for instances of them. Quote, there was a big increase in reports of parthenogenesis when people started keeping pet snakes. But your average reptile keeper doesn't keep a crocodile, he said. Quote, one theory is that it happens in species capable of parthenogenesis when numbers dwindle and they are on the verge of extinction." End quote. So yeah, really weird stuff going on, and the homunculus video was posted on the 5th, so these articles all came out after. Coincidence? Possibly. But who knows? Just wanted to share that with you guys. That's it for today, just a little small video. Let me know what you guys think, and all we can hope is that our minds may be unveiled. Let go of everything you think to be true. Relax the mind and ask the question, do I truly understand what this reality is?